Um, I'm Patrick, I'm French Canadian from Montreal. So this is a hat from the Ice Hockey Montreal Canadiens, the greatest ice hockey team in the world, obviously. Um, I've been uh, living in London uh, in the UK for, for 20 years. I'm an ex uh, business objects guy. Uh, yeah, very passionate about BI business objects, of course, uh, um, being a consultant for over 15 years and I joined the 360 uh, team uh, two and a half years ago. And I'm joined with Bruno, you know, a few words about yourself. Well, people also have been hearing me since uh, early this morning. I'm actually based in Boston. So this morning I had to get up pretty early uh, to support for this event. But uh, basically I'm a Bob J fan. As, as I mentioned, I'm a metadata fan and uh, I'm a global VP in the company. So, uh, and Bruno, Patrick, is, uh, is, is the B on your hat for, for business objects? Is that what it is? For Bruno, business objects or Red Sox. I won't say anything about, you know, the hockey team in Montreal and, you know, it's, we could argue, but that's fine. So, Bruno, a few words about this before I go uh, with the technical details. Yeah, go for it, uh, Patrick. So, what can you tell us uh, around how 360i centralizes metadata, whether it's from data services or Bob J? What, what can you tell me about that and how do we extract things? So, 360i's. And for those of you who were in the previous session with SAP, um, I've talked a little bit about it with our with our light um, version 360 scan. It is it was mentioned in a roundtable today with customers because this is clearly um, the the favorite options of all of our customers, which is why we wanted to dedicate a session you know um, about it. And 360 eyes, you can view it like an ETL, right? We will extract information from different places. And we will store that in a database so you can do your own analytics, your own BI on top of your metadata, which is why Bruno referred to it earlier as BI on BI, because we extract metadata from the system database, the audit database, and the business objects file store, which means we actually open the Webby reports, the Lumiras, the Crystal, the universes. We open these objects and we even extract metadata save it to your database of choice on premise and then you well, use webby to do analytics and i'll do tons and tons of demos today the latest addition and a lot of you will not be aware of this because it was released only a few weeks ago we now have the ability to do the same with data services so for those of you who are data services uh, developer you will know how difficult it is to explore your projects, your workflows, your data flows, your document things, your search for things. Well, uh, now 360 eyes can do that. And the second part of this session today will be about leveraging all of it together. What if you have business objects metadata, but also you have data services metadata? How far can you push things? And again, I'll do live demos about that. So, Patrick, uh, let's launch the first poll. Um, so, you know, basically, are you guys using data services? Or actually, you don't know anything about data services. So that's just a, a survey just to have an idea of how popular is uh, data services ETL for business objects. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's been around for a long time. Myself in my career, I must have installed it at 100 plus different clients um, over the years, especially so, since that, you know, Based on your license model, you may you may even have a free license of it, right? So, um, it'd be very interesting to see uh, what it is now in 2020. So, Patrick looks like it's pretty much a 50/50. So, it's half of the people, or 55% of the attendees, yeah. actually uh, have got data services. And considering that we've got like over 300 registrants, that's pretty uh, impressive. So. But I think that's fair enough. There's plenty of BI tools out there. So yeah, good stuff. Okay. All right. So um, if we go back to BI on BI, right? So BI on top of business objects, we extract information from these three different places I, I, I talked about earlier. Now, typically questions I get when I present this slide or a slide similar to this is, but I can get my CMS data myself using the query builder or using the CMSDB driver or, you know, whichever other things you want to do. But there are two problems here. 
problem number one is query builder does not give you access to all of the metadata the query builder um, you cannot save queries and reuse them later on and uh, the query builder does not go in the file store right so it's very limited if we talk about the cmsdb driver it's a little bit better in a sense that there are queries you can reuse and you could save that as Excel. So you know what, it's a little bit, um, you know, it's a step forward, but once again, it's not extracting all of the metadata. It's not speaking to the file store and it's, it's incredibly difficult um, to use. So for what it can do, it's difficult to use. Same thing for the audit, auditor data, right? The audit database is not new, it's been around since the first ever version of uh, Crystal Enterprise even 20 years ago, the data is in clear text, but again, you need to go and download the universes online. They're not maintained frequently. There's so much stuff in the audit database that the performance are really poor. So what we do is we extract only what is relevant, what is useful for audit purposes, and we uh, save that. And the file store, like I said, we open the reports, we open the universes, we save the metadata, but the real power is not to extract one or the other or the other. Just think of your data warehouse. The real power is combining data from multiple sources into one place so you can do real analytics. And that's what we're offering here. Similarly with BI on ETL, simply Webby on top of metadata coming out of the data services, it's about documenting what you have and like i said um, you can explore your metadata but i'll do live demo in a second so i won't spend more time uh, on this just here so yeah thanks a lot patrick so you know overall common issues for bob j deployments business object deployments is the ability to document your environment whether it's in business objects or data services that's really something that's been very consistent over the years the nice thing about 360Eyes is that it has its own universes that you can query and document in pre-canned Webby uh, reports. Or actually, you can, since you've got universes, you can actually build your own reports. Additionally, it allows you to take snapshots, uh, and you're able to compare these snapshots over time. And we've actually got many customers who even keep for regulatory purposes snapshots since 3.1 that they still compare to their 4.2 environments and they're because of the comparisons they're able to highlight the differences so that's something that uh, uh, 360eyes is able to do uh patrick do you feel confident enough to do a demo today or not i'm not sure <laughs> let's do this and about historical it's it's comparing history of whatever metadata you're talking about here the evolution of your users over time your security model over time uh, you task developers to update a universe. You will see which objects have been updated inside of the universe. It's uh, it's extremely powerful. Okay, Bruno, you see my screen? I see your screen. All right. Okay. So there's a lot of demos here. Um, Bruno, step in when uh, needed. Please uh, uh, keep sending your questions. Uh, there's been a few already, especially one Bruno. Somebody asked if we had a hat budget. Maybe it's cheaper than having a haircut budget. <laughs> Probably. At least it's easier to get these days. Last time I got a haircut, it was my daughter, so. All right, okay, so I want to do a technical demo here um, to show you without smoke and mirrors how it works, but I want to do it um, a bit more real life. So I will now separate my demos in three different, I guess, categories. Uh, first category, we will uh, assume I'm a BI manager. As a BI manager, I have a set of questions which will be different to a developers, for instance, right? So I'll present as a BI manager, I will present as a developer, and I will present as an auditor. Again, the auditor doesn't really care about how the universe is built, but probably cares about what's coming out of the universe. So um, different set of reports, different use cases, all within the same 360 eyes. Okay. Um, no, in no particular order, um, let's talk about um, licenses, right? So as a, as a BI manager, I will want to know which licenses I have, 
licenses which are used, maybe not used, the peak of the day, so that may be helpful to size my server um, accordingly. So there's a lot of information um, about understanding your licenses. And again, the power here is to extract licenses, information stored in a system database about your estate, about what's assigned and not assigned, but also the audit database, what's been used and when and how, and put all of it, all of it together. So here is an example here of session peak. This is a report everybody, everybody like. Right. Over the months, what sort of peak I've had, the peak per half an hour. Yeah. So if you have uh, 20 people logging on at nine, some people will log off um, and log on maybe at 9.20 uh, and so on. So per half an hour, what was your busiest half an hour? And then we break it down per name users, concurrent users, even time of the day, if you like. So again, um, if I was somebody who wanted to schedule reports, well, I can see here that indeed over time, it's totally dead because my business, maybe it's not 24 hours, right? So over overnight um, is dead. Whereas after lunch, it's probably not the right time to schedule anything or to overload my server because this is where I have the peak of my users. So again, understanding of your platform for sizing purposes and for um, license utilization. I take this report here. I showed it in the previous session. You see here what your license state is, what's assigned, what peak you've had, if you have any available licenses or not, what's been used recently or not. And then that can give you some indications here. Either you may convert some of these unused licenses to SAC. Maybe you were about to buy new licenses, but you thought everything was uh, was maxed out. Well, then it turns out you don't need to buy licenses. So again, leverage, leveraging metadata here. Now, what is really, really powerful is, yes, you can use those pre-built um, 80 webby reports we give we give you, but you know the universes are so detailed with tons of information. Do your own analytics, right? So this is a report here showing me. Okay, I have uh, have what? I have nine enterprise users. I have two SAP users. Some have never logged on. Okay, I'd like to know who has not logged on. Not a problem. Start a fresh report, or you know create your your own webby, it's not, a, it's not a problem. So what I'll do here, I'll update my query. And this is the universe, the CMS universe, stuff coming out of the system database, for instance. Everything you can imagine is here. And now, um, if, you, if you heard Josh at the round table today, he was saying how uh, for them, they need to do chargeback to the different departments and show back as well, show what's been use and consume. So what I'm going to do here, I'll load the parent group, I'll load the group name to this query. You see here that I have different, what we call snapshots. These snapshots are taken over time. Now it turns out it's all the same environment, but it could be different environments. So not only I can compare prod on the 9th of June compared to prod on the 2nd of June, this could be prod, this could be pre-prod yeah, to Make sure your environment uh, are synchronized, or it could be that um, you want to compare 4.2 and 4.3 during a migration to make sure everything's been migrated properly. So different environments, different versions over time. All right, so I said I want to understand the pattern based on my businesses. Okay, well, current group, sales, here are my top level groups. So in sales, I have UK and USA, that's good. Want to know more about the users, okay? So I have lots of users. These are, these are in sales. I want to know when they last logged on. All right. I want to know perhaps, uh, are, they, are they enabled or disabled? Because if they're disabled, okay, well, they, they're not disabled. So that's not really good uh, uh, for me here. Um, and then, and then I pick the wrong object, of course. <laughs> um, what is it I wanted to, to get? Uh, it, uh, it doesn't really matter. But the point is, you navigate through your data and you do the analysis that you want. In this case here, 
oh, that's what I wanted to show. Um, uh, user type, uh, no, not user type. Okay, anyway, uh, I was looking for concurrent or name, but I did not add it to, to my query. But here you can see if it's name or concurrent, and now you see that user two has been assigned a license, but he has never logged on. So you don't need that license, right? You can reassign to somebody else, uh, convert it to SAC and so on. So that's about doing your own analysis around licenses, chargeback and showback and so on. Now, another thing that the BR manager will keep an eye on is doing upgrades and migrations and cleanup. So we have lots and lots of reports regarding usage and activity. And once again, I know this is coming out of the audit database, but it would not be very helpful if I don't mix it with system database information. I'll open this one here, document usage. So this one is simple. The document name, is it used or not? And when was it used the last time? If it's never been used or haven't been used in I don't know, 141 days, well, maybe you decide that it's, uh, it's content that doesn't need to be migrated or can be cleaned. We have Southeast Water this morning um, in a round table saying that they've cleaned half of their estate, the subject estate reports, uh, using this, this sort of uh, reports and uh, analytics. And Patrick, by the way, around uh, cleanup is, I, I think typically on uh, the business subject shops that we talk to, in general, it's about 60%, and this is actually even a conservative number. It depends, of course, how old the deployment is, but 60% of the content hasn't been used in the past 13 months. So actually, when you do all these upgrades, frankly, is you know clean that content, actually archive it, and you can actually archive things with 360 and just put it aside before you do an upgrade. It's just, it's just common sense and it makes your upgrades, your migration so much easier, faster, and less troublesome. We have this customer in the US, I mean, we know, you know which one, um, they bought 360 eyes because they're doing a database migration, so they wanted to know what's been used by which database and uh, do some cleanup at the same time. Those guys have 2.7 terabytes of file store and they have hundreds of thousands of reports stuck in inboxes that nobody's been using. So with this, they were, about, they, they were able to give the evidence to the end users to say, hey, this content in your inboxes has not been used, you know, we would to clean this up and that's it. So reducing and, cost for a lot. And the funny story about that is some other customers, for example, is, and, and you guys can all probably relate to it, is if you go and see your end user and saying, you know, what aren't you using? They have no clue, but the common and standard answer is, you know what, I use everything and my content is the most important. And the great thing there is uh, you're actually having data. And once you get that type of answer, because trust me, you're going to get that answer, you can actually share this information from 360Is and tell them, you know what, this is actually what you're really using and this is all the content you're not using. So. Now tell me what we can clean up or archive. So on your screen here, you see another example of leveraging system database and audit database. The audit database will tell me which reports are used, but I cannot know with the audit database which universes they belong to, right? So now I see here, this universe has been used or has had actions made on Webby or Lumiro or Crystal. You know, there's been document action made nearly 4,000 times up on top of that universe. Well, that universe is way more crucial than, uh, I don't know, that Rio here, <laughs> where, where there's been five actions ever. So when it's time to test, um, you can set priorities uh, as well. And we have lots of example and, you know, conscious of time, we, we're talking a lot uh, here, but actions done by users, um, we have action um, specific um, um, which user, see that user two earlier, user two has never logged on. So clearly they have no actions, not very useful. Or my manager, my manager last logged on in January, but when, when he was active, he was quite active. So again, full understanding based on 
um, um, your activity and non-activity. That's the important bit here, and I'll come back to that. Okay, so that was BI Manager, just very few examples. There's lots more. Right, I'm a developer, and by developer, let's say I'm a universe designer or a webby reports here, um, webby report um, designer. One thing that um, will um, concern me is for sure the impact analysis. Impact analysis means, okay, I am going to make some changes to that universe here. And those of you on the session today uh, using BW queries or HANA views or free and SQL, all of this is the same thing. We document absolutely everything. If I make a change to that source, which document will be impacted, right? So that's like the activity we've shown earlier. We know that's an important universe, but now I can tell you where these, um, 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 uh, these queries or these sources have been used. You can even go um, a step further. You know you will make a change to the tracking numbers here. Not the full universe, just tr tracking number because you change back in system or whatever it is. Well, you know that tracking number has been used only by these reports here. And again, then you know what your impact is, what to test, who to notify, that sort of things. Now, this is powerful, very, very powerful. Again, we open the file store here. So here's a report. That's a Webby report. Again, it could have been Webby, Crystal, others. Um, no, Explorer, Lumira. We see that this report has, in this case, one query. There are many objects in that query. City has never been used in that report. Doesn't mean it's never been used ever, but it's not used in that report. So you can help improve performance by scaling down some queries if, uh, if required. Um, and I'll come back to another report in just a minute, but we document as well if there are any variables and if those variables are used or not. If I take this report here, you see this report has lots and lots and lots of objects in the query and almost none of them are used. That is not an efficient, <laughs> efficient report at all. So again, you can uh, document that sort of things here. Um, for those of you um, where um, data, uh, combination da data is a concern, you know when you save a Webby report that the data is saved with the report unless you manually purge the Webbies. Well, we have a report here to show you what's been purged or not purged. And if you wanted to automate the purging tasks, we have a 360 solutions to help with this. So again, feel free to get in touch. Bad documents, again, we open the file store, we know about things. This is just an example. You can customize this any way you want, but show me which webbies have more than 20 tabs, 50,000 rows, or 15 queries. Again, you customize this the way you want. But in my case, you can see I had a bit of uh, geeky fun, and I made myself a webby report with uh, 100 million rows coming out, <laughs> out of Snowflake. So um, clearly, uh, as a BI manager or as a developer, I may or not be happy to have reports generating that sort of query size. And then, well, you can go ahead and set, set limits uh, as you see fit. Patrick, would we, recently we had some cases where we had a customer who had a very long uh, variable. <laughs> yes. I think it was what, a thousand, or it was over a thousand lines. Yes, it was 150 Ks of formula. So. You know, for okay, you guys on the line would know you build a formula. If code equal one, then UK. Else, if code equal two, then USA. Yeah, if then else, if then else, if then else. Well, they had 150 kilobyte of text, which is, I mean, crazy long, difficult to manage. And um, because we are able to, uh, where, uh, here we go. Because we are able to read these variables we can you know help you do a full assistance um, around formulas which ones should be in the universe or in the etl instead uh, absolutely yeah, that was a funny one and, and that okay. for sure was a had an impact on the performances so. well yes absolutely uh, yeah <laughs> those reports did not perform well okay um universe documentation um i've shown you a lot of things but i'll just show you this one here because um, I, um, I think that's, that's very telling. Here's my adventure works on top of my SQL server. 
I have 36 objects in that universe, only 21 are used. I'm now going to have that universe point to Snowflake because I've done a database migration before SQL and Snowflake. Do I really need to, you know, to, to reload the same amount of objects when, when I know full well that some of them are not used anywhere? And you can see here, here's the universe. Country has been used in five objects. Very good. Current address has never been used. And then you can interrogate the business. Listen, is that something useful or not? Uh, yes, it's useful. You leave it. It's not useful. You clean. And if um, I'm, I have a session that I presented this morning, the second one, uh, we have a customer in the US. They said how much, how they saved hundreds of thousands of dollars by doing this analysis here, understanding which objects were not used in any of their BI. And that way they did not have to migrate that data from Oracle to HANA. They left it in Oracle as legacy stuff, no problem, but they did not have to pay uh, HANA to uh, store data that uh, nobody is interested with. So massive financial saving, never mind time and, and all this. Okay, and if I'm a developer, final example here, again, there's tons. Your scheduling analysis. Um, we had the Southeast Water saying this morning that they've run this sort of analysis to understand when reports ran at what time of the day to make sure that they don't, because they have 800 recurring schedulings, well, to not say, you know, to not make sure they all happen between 12 and 3 p.m., right? Uh, they know when the system is quiet. They know which webby um, um, interactive end scheduling is, is running. And thanks to this, they can make better use of the platform that they have much more efficiently. Okay. And um, final persona, I'm an auditor. So the auditor cares about who's using the system, what they have access to, and what data has been consumed. So number of things we can help these people. And again, this is all the same 360 eyes here. One thing is um, document security. As you can see, we can load the universe restrictions. I can load the security model. If I reuse my sales example of earlier, yeah, I know that sales have access to the top level folder only. UK have correctly access to UK. USA, correct access to USA. Now, because I can compare the security over time, so I'll do this one live here. I should have a, a compare, <laughs> compare folder security. I should have done this. Uh, um, uh, so the folder will be uh, person, if I do sales here, Okay, I'll do this, and then the first snapshot, I'll take my most recent one, and this snapshot here, that's probably when I didn't do the change. Let's see what's going on. Okay, you see, just a quick example. This is in yellow because in my first snapshot, the sales folder did not exist or had different permissions. Then we can highlight the differences. Oh, actually, no, you see here, before there was nothing, and now today there is view top level security. So you can compare security model over time as an, an example here. And on that case, we actually had, I think a, a month ago, we had a hospital that had done an upgrade. And uh, fortunately they had taken some snapshots before the upgrade, because once they've done the upgrade, actually they had some changes in the security. And the only way for them to figure out what the changes were was actually to compare these snapshots. It was a major issue. And, and, um, and finally, on this one here, what we, um, what we have the, the possibility, because we extract all of the, of the metadata. You see here, I've opened the information design tool. I have this universe here called bike stores. And in my business layer, I have some objects, some about orders, nothing about personal or confidential data here, nothing that I can you know, find out who people are. But I have things like you know, first name, last name, phone, email. Because we can extract the metadata coming out of the description, if you want, and we have ways to automate this, but you can write a little comment here, whatever comment you like. I like to put hashtags, it can be anything. We can say hashtag GDPR, hashtag GDPR, last name. 
Now, city, there's many people living in the same city. That's not really GDPR. Same, same with the state, but the zip code, yeah, definitely GDPR, right? You can, if you save that information in the description using, oops, sorry, I closed the, the, the wrong thing. Where's my browser? Using additional metadata, you can see that I can tell you which universes contain specific hashtags. So now as an auditor, I know, okay, this universe is of importance. It gives access to personal data and I need to know who's using these universes and which reports have been built on top of these universes. And you don't need to do to go um, any further. We've done that for you. That report is using a query. That query is not confidential, so it's in white. That one is confidential, is in yellow. So again, which universes and from there, which report, which users, uh, which what sort of activity was done on top of objects which were marked as confidential. Like I said, you could do this objects by objects in IDT, or we have this ability here where you could do this in Excel very quickly, find, replace, copy and paste, update, update your universe in Excel, re-upload the Excel to be subjects and all that is done automatically for you. So that's just uh, yeah, and we actually have many business users that are using that for uh, data catalog purposes. Um, and even in some cases, they're using 360 to connect to some, um, you know, popular data catalog solutions as well. Final demo before we go back to the slides, I want to talk about data services here, uh, which is, like I said before, newest uh, newest uh, solution that we we offer. I will actually log on to data services here. I, based on the on the on the feedback, only 50% of the people will, will have seen this before. But you'll get the point. You have projects, just like an IDT. Inside projects, you have job or jobs. Job or jobs will have workflows. Workflows may have sub-workflows. These workflows will have things called data foundation. These data foundations will have more objects and so on and so on, right? This data flow has two tables with one query transform, so lots of information here. If I wanted to quickly find out which object is used where, documented how, when's the last time there's been a job executed to run on top of this, this is impossible in data services designer. It's not possible in, in information storage either, for that matter, to document the full thing and do the analysis that you want. This is what we offer with um, um, 360Is for data services. Same idea, you run a job, extract the metadata, and then you can, as an example here, I'm going to document the same job I've just shown you earlier. Yeah, My project, name of my job, top level workflow. If I want to document workflows, no problem. Workflows have sub workflows. They have their own data flows. Data flows are using query transform, of course, source, target, uh, transformation. So the mapping formula transformation applied um, or, 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 or not. See here, you see some uppercase, some sysdate. Sys Where your data is coming from, which server, which username. So you source and target. and those jobs, when they ran, how long it took, rows that were processed. So full documentation, and as I've done earlier, you do whichever analysis that you like. And again, just like 360i, the previous one, you have access to all of that metadata here. So you can build, you can build whichever um, analysis um, that you want. So extremely powerful. Okay, Bruno. Thank you, Patrick. The slides over to you. Um, well, looks like you know people are staying on the session, so I guess you've done uh, pretty well. And uh, obviously, you don't need to join our 360 Suite Training Academy today. So I think I, I, I think everybody can agree. Uh, so an awesome thing you know that we haven't covered yet, or very briefly with 360, is that you can actually do impact analysis and data lineage. Uh, and the great thing now is that since we've added 
uh, data services recently, you can actually go from the database source all the way up to uh, the business object document. Uh, Patrick, you know, can you show us how that works? Yes, so I have already demonstrated the Webby report is consuming which universes or, you know, doesn't matter which way you want to do it. And that's when I say universe, again, BW queries, HANA views, Sphere and SQL, all of these sources, we document impact analysis within business objects. Now that we can do data services, and as you've just seen before, I can tell you the source, the target, the transform, which data flows, workflows, which projects, which jobs inside of data services. So clearly, I can do um, um, I can do both together. So I'll go back to my Webby here. And I have built these three reports here based on who you are. Maybe you're a data services person, a universe person, or a Webby, or again, I could mix this with the activities. If I'm an auditor, a BI manager, you know, all this is available. And what I've done, I'll just go to modify quickly. Uh, and I go to the queries. You see, I have a 360 eyes, universe, universe, metadata about my universe. I have metadata about the reports. In this case, it's Webby, but could be Crystal, Lumira, and others. And I have a data services universe. It's just some simple, you know, Webby stuff afterwards. So if I close this and I refresh this report. So now I'm a data services guy and I know that I'm going to make changes to these objects in some tables. I could go ahead here and pick a table instead, but I know I'm not making a change to the entire table. I'm making a change only to ETL jobs or, um, 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 or in my target, these things will, will impact somehow these two objects. Problem, you click OK. Um, we still have the concept of snapshots, remember to compare over time. Okay, so I've picked product name from the table product. I've picked order status from table orders. I see my source, I see my target. And now I can tell you by doing an end-to-end -end impact analysis, okay, out of my 15 universes, only these three are impacted. And these three universes, well, they've been used with these four different documents here. So your regression testing, informing your your end users, maybe you want, maybe it's not you, the universe or the webby guy or person, you know, so you know who to inform. So based on your changes. Now that could be different. You're a universe person and now you say, hey, I need to make changes to these two universes. Do I need to speak to anybody? Well, these two universes, these, this is where things are coming from. Oh, sorry, these are the webby documents used. So once again, you will want to test those and perhaps it's um, useful to see where things are coming from in, um, in, in, um, what's the name? in data services. So these are all the objects that these Webby reports are using coming from these universes. So very powerful. And finally, if I'm a Webby person and now this, we have a lot of questions about this. People who say we need to prove where the data, where the calculation comes from. And as you know, you, you have your Webby, your Webby can have their own formulas. Transformations can have happened at the universe level. Transformation could have happened at the query mapping level inside of data services. So thanks to this, if I'm a Webby guy, you know, I'm a Webby person and I want to know these two Webby reports here, where are things coming from? Now I've just listed, listed universes, but I could have easily added their formulas. Um, I could have easily added the query mapping here to know exactly the transformations which may, which may have occurred between source and Webby. So there's a lot of stuff in, 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 in the middle. That's it. Thanks a lot, Patrick. Uh, so um, we'll launch anyway uh, the next poll. Uh, so basically, we're interested to to know what's your interest level uh, in this topic. Um, just take a couple of seconds to fill up the survey. Uh, we're interested to know if uh, 
you just want to get some extra information, if you want to get a demo, um, if you've got a project planned and uh, you want to go forward with us or if you're not interested, uh, so um, please fill up the survey. Yeah, not necessarily just about data services, right? It could, it could be if you right. don't have data so, services course, and yes. you, you just have Bob J, it's two different solutions. So you, you you pick one, you pick the other, or you pick both uh, based on your on the on what you on what you're using. So anyway, thanks a lot for uh, uh, filling up this poll. So overall, uh, what's really interesting is on what you've covered is there is a lot of value for. You know, it can be an administrator, a BI manager, uh, finance. So that's very, very useful. And actually, these days, cost control and allocation are very critical. Actually, you were saying earlier, you were actually talking about the chargeback, showback. And actually, for a BI manager uh, who wants to know who's using what and who wants to understand how to allocate the funding um, and wants to know, okay, which report actually based on data from 360, I really want to know which reports are really being used or not used, and I want to know where I need to spend the money. Well, 360 Eyes is going to give you answers on that because right now without Big Brother on that, you're not able to know where really you should be spending that type of money. Uh, so, that's always handy. Another thing is for finance is, um, you know, they always want to perform chargeback as you were saying. And, but the issue is uh, they don't have an understanding on how business object is really being used and don't have access to granular group and object usage. And another interesting thing is for IT is this is very interesting because at the end is they're always seen as a cost center and um, actually here you're able to see to actually show what they're really doing and actually give a different perspective and actually act as a business support partner where they can say you know what i've been doing this the money i've been allocating on these reports on these people they're really using it and it's got an impact on uh, on our business so that's very very uh, handy uh, so patrick uh do we have any questions? I see actually a couple of questions coming yeah. in. Um, yeah. What, what I'd say is, sorry. if you want, yeah, go ahead. what I would say is, um, if you want to hear real life scenarios of these things here from customers, not from us, um, the session today, the roundtable we had, the the second half was about these customers sharing their own utilization of 360 eyes in their own ways and how much value it gives them. And there were different type of people there again, auditors, uh, finance, developers, and so on. So um, we will send these recordings and uh, it was a great, uh, a great session. So these are the common use cases that uh, we support. One of the most popular ones is always upgrades, uh, migrations, and then cost reduction. But there is a lot more, it can be around uh, regulatory needs, it can be around backup, it can be around automation. Uh, there are just a lot of <laughs> a lot of different topics. Um, so I'll have a look at the other questions now, uh, Bruno. Yeah, that's it. So um, yes, um, question from Glenn, and I'm just reading them out loud here. So <laughs> uh, question from Glenn: uh, Can the output of these reports, inactive users slash never logged in users, directly be used to automate on license slash concurrent? We have to do around a hundred users monthly manually so if you're okay if i understand the question correctly is you know you have users you know that um they are um you want to change their license type if i understand or, or disable them right um if um, the answer is yes it's not with this solution here and glenn will will be in touch but we have a solution called 360 view 360 view is a solution we have to do bulk administration, which is what you're talking about here. So uh, 360 View will be able to look at your users and change the licensing type, enable, disable, all of these things automatically in bulk um, based um, on an Excel spreadsheet. And that Excel spreadsheet, either you populate it manually or you could have 360 eyes generate that spreadsheet for you. So the answer is yes, absolutely. 
but it will be a couple of solutions here, not just 360 hours. Um, next uh, question from uh, Tagdas. I hope I have pre pronounced your first name correctly. Uh, does this tool include information for webby shortcuts? So if you mean about documenting the shortcuts that you have, and um, yeah, absolutely, yes, it's part of the metadata we extract. Um, also, another question, um, same person, another question. Do you have any solution like a driver that masks GDPR data on the go for Bob J. Okay, <laughs> I see what you mean here. Um, no, no, we don't do this. We don't, we we, we don't sit between, um, you know, business objects um, and the database. That's something you would do at your database level or at the ETL um, level. Absolutely. So your ETL tool would be able to do this based on the security. Um, your database level will be able to do that. Um, Snowflake, I just read they are adding a new feature for later this year to do this in an incredible way. But uh, yes, that's not what, what we do. But great question. Um, okay, so from Johan, not a question, but a comment. 360 Eyes is a unique and extremely valuable tool for both platform admins as well as developers. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Johan. <laughs> I was trying to see what the question was, but that's great feedback. Thank you. Um, from um, Bjorn. Um, is 360 eyes for data services a separate product? Bruno, you want to expand on that? Yeah, it, it is. So, uh, 360 eyes data services is a separate module. So, it works with 360 eyes for business objects. Uh, and 360 eyes data services is actually independent. So, it's got its own universe with its own report. So, it talks to 360 eyes for Bob J, but yes, it is a different. Uh, it's a different report. And, and by the way, on one of the questions from Cagdas around. Uh, GDPR, uh, one interesting thing uh, to know as well is sometimes you can try to mask uh, GDPR content, but the issue sometimes is uh, GDPR content can be actually the sum of different objects that makes it GDPR. So that's why some organizations are not going for that type of solution and they're going towards data catalog like what uh, we offer with 360, where they're able to catalog their GDPR content. Uh, and by the way, uh, Mufid will get back to you, Cactus, on uh, on the uh, had budget. So you'll have to work it out with them if if if, if you're nice enough. I have uh, there's a comment here, nothing to do with uh, <laughs> with the questions. But uh, hello, Youssef. Youssef uh, reminded me that uh, we worked together at the start of the century. But uh, yes, yes, I I have to wear a hat now. Things have. Things have changed since we met each other back uh, many, many, many years ago. So, <laughs> so nice to hear from you. And I have a question uh, uh, as well I'd like you to uh, cover, which is from uh, Fred. And basically, Fred is asking, well, how do you compare 360 eyes to uh, Information Steward? Okay, it's it's not the same offering, right? Information Steward, it's a master data management solution. It's about you know data quality at the end of the day, um, but it has a feature which is about data lineage, where you know you can click around and say, hey, this is uh, this is my data services job, and you can expand about your workflow, your data flow, and which universes and webs are using them. So you can do a graphical navigation of the job in SAP Information Steward. The problem with this though is you can't do analysis, you can't document offline, you can't compare historical, you know, over time or between environments. It's just an exploration and it's extremely um, expensive. You would not buy information to it just for that feature. You would, you would want to be in a real MDM um, use case here to go with the solution, which is why we created this solution because it's not a replacement for data services. It's not even in the same sector, right? It's more it's more towards data cataloging rather than than MDM, which is why we decided to do it. It's not it's not competing. It's totally separate, and we offer different and more value. 